We're going to go ahead and talk about spline motions. A spline motions are an execution of a group of motions. So here we just went ahead already and created a list of frames. So we have P1 through P4 of type frame, and we get that data from the get application data class, which is something that we talked about in previous lessons. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a instance of the spline class and we're going to create SPL. So here we have SPL as a motion type of P1 moving to position 1. And we're going to go ahead and set the joint velocity and the orientation type. Now the orientation type is basically how your TCP or whatever frame you're moving with moves towards the target frame. So it can be a constant or it can be variable or it can have different parameters. So just for that specific motion, we just wanted to show you quickly, you can do a constant. You can also set a circ. So you can think of like an arc, the middle point or the radius of the arc as well as the destination of that arc. And you can also add linear motions. And again, here we're adding another SPL back to position one with a joint velocity. Uh, for the entire spline block. So therefore we deleted the one specifically on the first move. Here we are creating a spline joint position class instance, which is we're calling spline JP. And that just allows us to command PTP motions. So here we're just gonna command all of our P1 through P, let's just do P3 as PTP motions. And you can on this go ahead and set your joint velocities to again 0.5 for the entire motion batch. So this entire spline is going to move within that specified velocity limit. Now sometimes you'll want to do some dynamic splines which is you have a list of frames and you want to add them to a track for example or to a segment of a track and then add that segment of the track to a complete track. That's really helpful when you're breaking down large splines and you don't necessarily know exactly how many frames you're going to be moving to. So here we have three array lists. The array lists include the frame list, the track segment, and then the track. And you'll see how we we'll utilize all of those in a second. We'll create another one as well called a motion list just to show you of another way of doing something similar if you have like less than 300 frames that you're moving around to that's a little bit more fluid and smooth. So here we're just going to go ahead and create frame lists and add all of our frames to the frame list. So once we do that, what we basically have is we have this array list of frames with all of our points in them. And then we're going to iterate through those frames. So for every frame inside of frame list, I want to do something specific. And what I want to do is I want to add them as motions to my track segment. So here I'm going to add all of my motions to also my motion list to show you that second way of doing uh, a large spline motion dynamically. So here I can go ahead and mod my size of my track segment. So if the remainder is zero, that means I know I have 20 frames in my track segment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that set of 20 and I'm just going to push it to an array of temp motions. And then I'm going to be able to now create a spline using that array of temp motions and then add that spline to my complete track. Remember my track is a array list of splines. Now I have like multiple splines all set up back to back. And then after I iterate through all the index of frames lists, I'll jump out of that for loop. And if I have anything left in the track segment, meaning I added something and it didn't, I added something to the track segment and it didn't fulfill my 20 frame segment, then I want to just go ahead and add that to the end of my track. So if I had like six or 10 or 15 frames left or SPL motions left, then I didn't get into that if statement of when my track segment is size 20 and therefore I'm gonna add it to the end of the track. So 
Another way to do this is just an emotion batch. So here I'm going to, again, take that list of motion motions that I created, uh, the array list of motions I created, and just push that to an array as well. And I'm giving it, again, my motionless size because you have to give an array a size. And then I'm going to take this motion bash class and make an instance of that and push my array inside of that motion batch. So now I have this motion batch with all of these points inside of all of these motions. So you have a array list of splines or you have one large spline uh, dynamically that can be utilized. So here I'm just going to quickly write a bunch of git loggers to kind of keep track of what motion is occurring when. And then I'm going to do that robot.move to the different splines. So spline to CP, spline JP. And what you can see here, actually, it's quite interesting, but I'm moving with my default frame. So robot's default move frame is the flange. But if I wanted to inject a tool or workpiece and then do dot get frame and then move to the specific target positions along that frame with respect to my TCP of the tool or something like that, I can do that as well. And I'll define that better in another video on like how to move with respect to different types of tools, workpieces, or just frames in general. So I had to actually iterate through the spline track. So therefore I did a spline S for every spline in the track. I'm just going to go ahead and play it. And you'll see me run through all of the different splines so you know that they all work. The best one always is the motion batch.